Diversified Fall Protection welcomes you aboard as one of our Fall Protection customers. We believe your fall protection system is the safest, most reliable, and most durable fall protection system available. These systems will not prevent slips and falls, but they are engineered to minimize the distance a user can fall, and they will arrest a fall before the victim can be injured. The rigid trolley rail design has proven to be the most effective design available for preventing serious injuries and fatalities. Substitution of any of the provided components requires approval by diversified fall protection. Although the design of your system may vary slightly, let's review the components of the typical fall protection system. The trolley beam was designed with beveled flanges to track and center the trolley wheels on the beam. The trolley beam may be part of a high strength support structure, such as our patented triangular truss, as shown here, or may be attached to a suitable existing structure. In any case, the trolley beam is the same. Please note the system reading that is stamped on the system tag. The trolley is a custom designed personal fall arrest system. Since the wheel bearings are permanently lubricated and sealed, your trolley should never require maintenance. The trolley wheels are beveled to match the beam flanges, ensuring that the trolley will constantly center itself on the beam at all times and will run smoothly over the course of travel. Only one person may use the trolley at a time. The trolley is not rated for any other type of use. The max weight rating is 500 pounds, including all tools. Ensure that the trolley rolls freely and is not snagging on the beam. The carabiner typically attaches to the trolley or to an engineered anchor point attached to a structure. The carabiner provides an attachment for the self-retracting lifeline. The carabiner has two spring-loaded safety locks that prevent it from opening or accidentally releasing. The mechanism must first be turned and then pushed forward to open. When you release the locking mechanism, it should automatically snap back into the locked position. Should this feature ever fail to lock when released, the carabiner must be replaced. The self-retracting lifeline, typically called the SRL, is the most critical component in any fall protection system. SRLs are available in a variety of links and configurations. The SRL has an automatic retraction system, similar to an automobile seatbelt. The retractor is spring-loaded to eliminate slack in the lifeline. When a fall occurs, the sudden tug on the lifeline causes an internal braking system to lock. Whenever the lifeline is pulled out at a speed of at least 4.5 feet per second, the brake mechanism will sense a fall and lock until tension is released. A damaged lifeline is said to have been shocked when the unit has been damaged by a fall arrest or other severe impact. Do not use an SRL if this warning indicator is visible. You will also note that the swivel will no longer turn. Shocked SRLs must be removed from service immediately and will need to be recalibrated by a certified factory technician. This cannot be done in the field. The SRL may be fooled into an unintentional fall arrest by a sudden yank on the lifeline, such as bending over too quickly. If this happens, simply standing back up will release the brake immediately without damage to the system. Rapid vertical movements, such as jumping down two steps on a ladder, should be discouraged as it will cause the brake to engage. The lifeline should be returned to housing when not in use. We do not recommend attaching the lifeline clamp to a handrail or other surface. This can cause the retraction springs to eventually fatigue, and the SRL may not function properly. The hookup clamp on the lifeline attaches to the safety harness. The clamp has a double locking feature that is designed to prevent accidental opening. To open the clamp, two separate movements are required. Note how the first locking mechanism must be released before the second may be released. Both locking features will close immediately when you let them go. The SRL that typically comes equipped with your system has a rating of 310 pounds. The lifeline clamp should be visually inspected each and every time you prepare to hook up to the system. The SRL should dispense and retract with ease following a rest. Harnesses are designed to distribute the energy generated by a fall arrest into the safest parts of a victim's body, where it may be absorbed without causing serious injury. The only attachment allowed is to the user's back to the metal D-ring located between the shoulder blades on the upper back. 
D-rings on the front of the harness or alongside the hips must never be used for fall arrest purposes. The Delta II harness that typically comes equipped with your system is rated for 420 pounds. Harnesses should be visually inspected prior to every use. Ensure buckles work smoothly. If present, inspect the quick connect buckles by ensuring that the release tabs work freely and that a click is heard when the buckling engages. Webbing material must be free of frayed, cut, or broken fibers. Check for tears, abrasions, mold, burns, or discoloration. Check for pulled or cut stitches. Broken stitches may be an indication that the harness has been impact loaded and must be removed from service. All labels should be present and fully legible. If inspection reveals a defective condition, remove unit from service immediately. Locate the back D-ring held in position by the pad. Lift up the harness and hold by this D-ring. Ensure the straps are not twisted. Grasp the shoulder straps and slip the harness onto one arm. The D-ring will be located on your backside. Slip your free arm into the harness and position the shoulder straps on top of your shoulders. Now bend forward. Pull one leg strap forward through your legs and connect the tongue buckle or quick connect buckle. The leg straps should now be attached securely, but loose enough to allow enough slack to walk and bend over comfortably. At least three inches of webbing must extend past the buckle on leg straps. Attach the pass-through buckle and adjust tension. The chest straps should be six inches down from the top of the shoulders. A properly adjusted harness is not only more comfortable, it is also safer. A harness adjusted too tightly will be uncomfortable, but a harness worn too loose may prove dangerous in the event of a fall arrest. If a fall has occurred, the suspension trauma safety strap, when used in conjunction with a full body harness, is meant to prolong the allowable suspension time. Unzip each pouch and hook the straps together. The straps accommodate one foot or both feet in the loop at a time to relieve pressure while waiting for rescue. This product is not to be used as a replacement for a rescue plan. It may only be used in a situation where a fall has occurred or for training. After visual inspection, put on the harness and make any adjustments necessary. Connect the SRL to the back D-ring of the harness. If you have an access system, release the footlock at the base of the gangway and allow the gangway to slowly drop to the surface. Once you have access to the vehicle or working surface, we encourage you to use the tug and walk procedure. To begin, grab hold of the thick rubber sleeve located just above the locking clamp and give the lifeline a firm tug to lock the braking mechanism. You will have to maintain tension so the brake remains engaged. You can now walk the full length of the system with the lifeline locked this way and the trolley will follow you wherever you go. Regardless of how you prefer to walk with the system, you should never allow yourself to walk more than about five feet away from the overhead trolley at any time. Pulling out too much of the lifeline can reduce reaction time of the brake and create a swing fall hazard. Experience tells us that most fall arrest victims will be able to regain their footing without assistance. It is always better to plan ahead. Establishing a procedure for training your people how to respond to an emergency before a rescue is needed. That procedure is called a rescue and retrieval plan. A worker can only be suspended for a limited length of time without suffering potentially serious consequences. The suspension period before rescue should not exceed six minutes. Suspension time exceeding as little as 15 minutes can lead to serious health consequences. It is the company's responsibility for the safety of their own employees. But it is also true that when contractors such as truck drivers are working on your property, your company may also be held responsible for their safety. Your company's policy requiring the use of fall protection by those contractors must be written and prominently posted at the worksite, and those rules must be strictly enforced. OSHA regulations require your company to train its people to use the fall protection systems properly. Retrain your employees annually to maintain compliance with OSHA regulations. For more information, visit www.fallprotect.com or call us at 1-844-958-1144.